Hi everybody, Billy here. So this is lecture three and uh, we are now all experts in biology and biochemistry and now we can get on with uh, doing some calculations. So today's lecture is on rates, yields and stoichiometry. So let's just get our cell out again. There's the little microbe swimming in the fermenter. And this specific cell today will be basically um, consuming glucose. You know, always there will always be some sort of carbon source that really is the energy for the organism. So glucose is the most common one. So this, this organism is eating some glucose. You've seen that it also needs to consume some sort of um, nitrogen source. The simplest form, and some organisms actually can consume this, is ammonia. Why do we need the nitrogen? You know this from uh, um, all the nitrogen and amino acids that you've just learned. Okay, for this specific example, we'll also be consuming some CO2. This is a nice property of some bugs, you know, helping to get rid of all that excess CO2 in the atmosphere. And, uh, of course, the purpose of this whole exercise of consuming these materials is to build biomass, but first of all, you need energy to build biomass. So the main product for any organism is actually more of the organism itself. So here's a half a little bacteria. So the organism consumes all these components to make more of itself, but it needs energy to make more of itself. We're going to call the biomass X. Okay, so whenever you see the capital the X, we're referring to biomass itself. So note that we see X as an excretion product from the original cell. Okay, but the, typically there won't be only X excreted. You will also, in this specific example, um, excrete, let's just say, some succinic acid. Succinic acid is a very useful chemi chemical, and we make it in our laboratory. And let's say there's another byproduct of acetic acid. Okay. So here we have a bug consuming chemicals and excreting chemicals. The one chemical, the chemical of biomass, is of course a complex chemical, but we'll get into more detail on this later. But for us as chemical engineers, it's all about rates. So we're going to be talking about the rate of succinic acid production and the rate of acetic acid production. We're even going to talk about the rate of biomass production. At this stage, you might wonder what the units of rate is. We'll get into detail on that later. For now, just think of it as moles per time. Okay. And of course, not only does product get gets produced, but also you have substrate being consumed. So I'm just going to indicate the rates of ammonia, CO2, and we use S a lot for glucose. So what I have here is free consumption rates. You will note the minuses in front of the reagents. Why do we do this? Well, we really do it because there's a convention of R being a production rate. But we want to exclusively work with all rates being positive. So, um, you know, just remember for now, all rates needs to be positive. Okay, positive rates is what we're going to be doing. So if we work with a reagent, that's the reason why we put the little minus in front of the rates. All of this will become clear later. So here's our buck consuming some chemicals and making some chemicals. I'm going to make it... Uh, okay, so this is better. Now I can make this a bit smaller. And now we want to write out the overall stoichiometry. So let's write it like a normal chemical reaction. We start with glucose. Glucose we typically as the substrate, so therefore we use the term S to describe the glucose. So glucose plus, uh, in this case, ammonia, also plus some CO2 as reagent in this case, uh, reacts to form, first of all, biomass. Biomass, not only biomass forming, but also some succinic acid, also some um, acetic acid and uh, there might even be some water that is formed okay so whenever we write out chemical reactions we need to know the stoichiometry of the overall chemical reaction so i'm going to put in some white blocks in front of all the components 
Okay, so determining the stoichiometric coefficients within these white blocks is really what we're going to be doing in chapter 3 and chapter 4. Okay, so um, you'll also see later on that the stoichiometry doesn't necessarily stay fixed, but more about that later. So whenever we do stoichiometry, we choose one component as the basis. So what I'm going to do here is just take the block in front of glucose out and I am just going to write a 1 in front of the glucose because that will be our basis. Then we know that whatever we have in the block is referred to in our subject as the yield coefficient. We define a Y for yield and then the subscripts work like this. S would be the basis glucose chosen for this specific way of writing the stoichiometry and you will use N here for the nitrogen source. So YSN is really defined and this is very important as the rate of nitrogen consumption make it positive therefore we have the negative divided by the rate of glucose consumption. Okay we can for example do a similar thing for X where we have Y remember glucose is our basis S and we'll have X as the component that we get the stoichiometric coefficient from. And this will be defined as the rate of biomass production divided by the rate of glucose consumption. Okay, so this is how we define stoichiometric coefficients. It's the ratio of rates and it just relates the overall stoichiometry of what happens over the cell. Okay, later on, chapter 4, we'll get into the cell, but now it's just over the boundaries of the cell. We have one overall equation, but at this stage, we know what the products are. We're not sure what the stoichiometric coefficients are, and this chapter is all about determining them. So, what we can do, and I'm just going to take my stoichiometry over here, is to say we're now going to use tools. Okay, so we're going to take this equation. And remember, the white blocks are the unknowns. And we're going to use some tools to get some answers for what is in the white blocks. Okay. And in chapter 3, so in chapter 3, this is the chapter we're on at the moment, the tools are really going to be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen balances. By the way, you probably have noticed it by now, but these, three ele oh, these four elements are really... Um, what most biomass consists out of. There is some extras involved, but we won't be doing balances on the extra elements. Okay, so we're basically just going to be doing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen balances to be able to solve for what's in the white blocks. Okay, and then later on, let's just give you a bit of a teaser for what's coming in chapter three. There's some more tools we're going to be using in chapter, oh, sorry, in chapter four that will be, um, there we're going to do energy balances. Okay, by doing energy balances, um, and let's just put ATP there because um, you know something about ATP, that's how we do biological energy balances. So we're going to be performing energy balances really just in order, the energy balances is just to extend, to get more answers of all these white unknown blocks. So really I want you to think of all of this as just determining the overall stoichiometry. Of course, when we do energy balances, we'll be getting into the internal metabolism. Okay, all those reactions you had in chapter two, we're going to physically model them. And uh, that's really saying we need to include the internal reactions in the cell for us to be able to predict more of the little white blocks or stoichiometric coefficients or yield coefficients, as we call them. This is it. So get familiar with how we define rates, also with the signs of rates. Get familiar with yield coefficients just being the ratio of rates. And also get familiar with the way we define yield coefficients in terms of the subscripts. Happy reading. I'll be in contact later.